Monday Night Quarterback kicks off now with Ron Futrell and Robin Burke. Well, hi, everybody. Coming to you live from the Grand Canal Shops here at the Venetian Hotel. Tonight is going to be a fun Tuesday night edition of Monday Night Quarterback for you here with Robin Burke. I'm Ron Futrell. We've got an exciting show planned for you here, a lot of sports and a lot of fun stuff here with it. We've got underneath us right now, we have the gondolas going through here. We've got the canal, the canal right underneath us, and we're even going to taste some of the food from Italy here at the Venetian. Was that your idea? Did you come up with the, the food? I, yes, not a bad idea. All right, I like all right. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have a lot of sports action for you as well. In fact, the running Rebels took to the court, and that game just finished against High Point out at the Thomas and Mack. We will have a live report just ahead. Also, it is NFL playoff time. We're going to have a preview of some of the playoff games and check out what could be happening this weekend in some of the key matchups. Plus, sports stars Wayne Gretzky, Greg Maddox, and others were here in Las Vegas today. We'll uh, hit the golf course with them just ahead. But first, let's take a look at this championship game, the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Great game. It was a game that started last week and finally <laughs> ended uh, just moments ago here. I think it seemed like it. It started around 5 o'clock. The longest bowl game in BCS history. One <laughs> heck of a football game and a fun one it was indeed tonight. First quarter, Chris Winkie, touchdown pass here to Warwick. And Peter Warwick, look at him off to the races here. He had three touchdowns in the game. 7 nothing. Knowles with the lead. There was no scoring for about the first eight minutes of the game, but then the scoring just erupted in this one. The Hokies get their punt blocked. Jeff Cheney picks it up, scoops it up with a touchdown. 14 nothing. Florida State. This was a game of runs throughout. Florida State started off strong at the start. Then Michael Vick, look at the touchdown pass to Andre Davis. Good-looking pass from the lefty quarterback. It's 14-7 Florida State. Got the Hokies coming back. Chris Winkie, though, turns around and gets Florida State back in this one. Touchdown pass to Dugans. It's 21 to 7, Florida State. How about Warwick? Can he return punts? We saw him catch the touchdown pass there, Robin. How about returning kicks? Is this guy good All or the what? Way. As he takes it down the right sidelines and into the end zone. 28-7. Looking like a Florida State route at this point. Into the second quarter, though, Michael Vick keeps it for a touchdown run. 28-14, Florida State led at halftime. Signs of life there for the Hokies. Michael Vick then pitches to Kendrick. As the Hokies continue to come back, what a great offensive game this was. 28-23 now Florida State with the lead. Here's another touchdown for you. Kendrick again. Now it's 29-28. Virginia Tech comes back to take the lead, but now we got Florida State with another touchdown pass. Chris Winkie to Ron Dugans. 36-29 and then from there the final score you see. 46-29 Florida State Seminoles in a wild football game win the national championship tonight here down at the Sugar Bowl. Or do I need to say Nokia Sugar the Bowl? Nokia Sugar Bowl. And Bobby Bowden yes. now has his perfect season. He is excited about that. First one ever that he's had. He won a national championship in the 90s, but now as we start the, what do we call Do we call them the zeros? The aughts. Uh, the aughts or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> he's won a national championship right off the bat, and congratulations to him. Okay, we have now from the Venetian Racing Sportsbook the director, Mark Goldman. And first of all, Mark, a lot of action certainly on this football game on on both sides but mainly on virginia tech would you say at like seven right well we opened the game at five and a half early the game was bet up to seven and then the money came back on florida excuse me on virginia tech and we closed it back at five and a half so wow. we had two good two-way action on the game and it was pretty exciting Good news for the sports books around town. Would you Anytime say there's two-way action, it's good news for the sports books. Absolutely. But most sports books had Virginia Tech money here, and Florida State covered the point spread tonight. That's correct. It, most okay. of the sports books did have Virginia Tech money. While you're here, we got to talk about the NFL a little yeah. bit, okay? We do, oh, by the way, have that coming up here right. this week. We've got a graphic that show you some of the games coming up. First of all, the games NFC and AFC, we'll go ahead and split them up that way. And give me your thoughts, first of all, on we've got a couple of teams with buys in the AFC. Buffalo at Tennessee and then Miami at Seattle. Buffalo at Tennessee. Buffalo's changing their quarterback right in the first game of the playoffs. Tennessee's been underappreciated all year. This team can go all the way. That Tennessee number's too low. The number is five. Are you, you've got to be getting some Tennessee we money We are so getting far. Tennessee money, and it wouldn't surprise me to see it go to six, maybe even six and a half. Okay, now in the AFC, or rather the uh, NFC, let's take a look at some of the matchups there. Sure. A couple of teams that have first round buys, St. Louis and Tampa Bay are going to be kicking back this week. But Detroit at Washington, Dallas and Minnesota, the two games there. Detroit at Washington. Detroit has never won in Washington. They're really heading south, and I think the money's going to go on Washington this week. What about Dallas and Minnesota? This is a tough game. Everyone thinks Minnesota's going to roll. Dallas is going to come to play. Hmm. 
you have a prediction on the Super Bowl winner for us? Come on, let's go I, ahead. Or, or teams, let's go with first teams in the Super Bowl. I think we're going to see in the Super Bowl Tennessee and Tampa Bay, and I think Tennessee is going to prevail. Wow. All right. Mark Goldman, good luck to you as the Super Bowl and uh, NFL season continues here. Thank and you. Thumbs up, would you say, so far on the college football season for you guys? Very much so. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, All right. Mark. Thanks, Mark. Well, you know, we do have Super Bowl 34 here on ABC on Channel 13. The game will be played in the Georgia Dome in Atlanta late in January, the last Sunday, always in January, January 30th to be exact. We get a ton of calls from people wanting information on the game, you know, how to plan your party. Pre-game starts at 11 o'clock and runs to 3. The game itself from 3 till about 645. That's when the post-game shows begin. Eight hours of fun with the Super Bowl this year. Kickoff should be right around 3.20 in the afternoon. Las Vegas lights up the Super Bowl, you know, with parties all over town. Looking forward to that. That'll be fun this year, certainly, with the Whoever's game. Whoever's in it. Kickoff, <laughs> right of, kickoff should be right around 3.20 on Sunday afternoon, the 30th. But, you know, tune in for the pregame oh. at 11 a.m. <laughs> eight, only eight hours of football, sort of like we had tonight with the National Championship game in college football here. It's a marathon. <laughs> okay, we got Rebel basketball going on at the Thomas and Max Center. The game just completed here moments ago. That's right. Bernard Watson is standing by live to tell us how it came out, Bernard. Robin, I think everybody is happy that the game is over. It was not pretty. In fact, it was downright ugly. The Rebels did finally win 72-53 against the High Point Panthers. But the Rebels came into this game heavily favored against this small school out of North Carolina. But the first half was anything but a blowout for the Rebels. In fact, for the first part of the game, they were down 17-4. to They could not hit any type of shots. You're seeing some of the few highlights of the first half but for the most part they just could not score they couldn't hit layups they couldn't hit jump shots but as you see right now just going on the break brotherson hits the big slam that got the crowd going but for the most part they were missing shots and then with about eight minutes left they went on a run you see here a little short jump shot rebound right there that put him up and basically towards the end of the first half they made a run they cut it to 25 24 and then with just seconds left in the first half Donovan Stewart hit a crucial three from the corner that put him up 28-25, and that's how the first half ended. And they must have gotten a strong talk from uh, Coach Baino because in the second half they sort of put it together more. There was some itchy points in there for a while, but they hit some shots, and they came through, and, and the final score, as I mentioned, was 72-53. But again, it was a lot closer than just about everybody here at the Thomas & Mack expected. From, back to you now. Bernard, real quick here before oh, yeah. you go. Now, there's been some talk about Luke Kelly. Certainly, he. Uh, what's the latest on that? I understand he is eligible now to be able to begin play for the Rebels in their next game coming up Monday when they enter conference play. Luke Kelly, a, a key player. We haven't seen him yet on the court, but he's finally eligible now, a key player on this team. Yeah, in fact, you're, in fact, you're right, Ron. They announced that Luke Kelly is enrolled. He will be enrolled here at UNLV. He has been cleared to play, and that's going to be a big lift for this team. They could have used his scoring tonight because they were having some problems, so I'm sure everybody on the team, as well as the fans, are, are very excited to hear this exciting player is ready to play. Back to you. All right. Thank you very much, Bernard Watson. Pretty good player. They say that he's the type of player that will replace a Sean Marion in the lineup for UNLV and the next game for the Rebels Monday as they take on BYU at the Thomas and Max Center. Luke Kelly expected to be there for the game. He is indeed eligible. Okay, now we mentioned here at the Venetian Grand Canal shops that we're at tonight that we're going to show you some of the fun stuff that we got going on here tonight. And Robin is standing by with some of the gondoliers here at the, the canals here. Robin? Ron, we are at the highlight of the canal shops actually in St. Mark's Square. This is the gondolas and we don't mean the ski gondolas of course the boats the gondolas and you can see the the, the brightly attired gondoliers right there and this is one definitely one of the highlights this is where tourists anybody alike they can come down and get a real taste of venice isn't that right carmelo carmelo see si. oh. very nice to see you tonight how are you i'm just great tell me about this little tour that the people get to take uh, on the gondolas venezia magnifico as you see is the most beautiful hotel huh the gondola ride is on the second floor of the hotel. We have a recreation of Il Gran Canal in Venezia. The canal is approximately quarter mile ride, almost a 10 minute ride. Wow, that's pretty big. And it, you know, it smells a lot better than Venice too. <laughs> we have the secret in Las Vegas. They don't know about this in Europe yet, but we're gonna tell the secret tonight on the news. Ooh. We have a lot of chlorine. It, that's why the water's prettier here. <laughs> it's, it's very nice, see. All right, I'm gonna talk to these guys, do you mind? All right, we have some tourists, I imagine, right? Yes. Where are you from? 
I am from uh, Denver. Denver, it's mm -hmm. good for you, so am I. Are you? All right, go Broncos. All right. All right, well, what about you? I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. What do you think of this whole thing? It's kind of crazy. It's beautiful. It's really nice. Have you been to Venice? I have not. I have not. I've been to other places in Italy, but not Venice yet. You feel like you've been there now? I, I do. Okay. Completely. I imagine this is what it's like. What, what's been your best, your favorite thing so far? So far, for Vegas? Here. Here is probably the gondola ride. It's very nice. It's very soothing. It's very surreal. Shopping isn't bad either. Oh, it's wonderful. That's all right. Well, that is a look at the, the gondolas and the gondoliers. Thank you, Carmelo. We appreciate it. Ron, back to you. How did you find a Bronco fan there, Robin? That's what <laughs> you found a Bronco fan there in the crowd here at the Venetian Hotel. Okay, time for us to take a quick break here. When we come back, we're going to hear from Greg Maddox and Wayne Gretzky, who I talked to earlier today, as the fun continues here from the Grand Canal Shops with a live special Tuesday edition of Monday Night Quarterback coming back live from the Venetian right after this. Welcome back to our live show tonight. Coming to you from the Venetian Hotel, the Grand Canal Shops here. We're going to be tasting some of the fine food they got here in just a little bit and checking out some of the sights and sounds here from the Canal Shops. Now, Bill Belichick quit as Jets coach today. This was surprising news. He didn't last very long on the job one day. Belichick replaced Bill Parcells yesterday as head coach of the Jets. What it came down to is he wanted to talk to the New England Patriots about their head coaching uh, vacancy. The Jets wouldn't let him. But today, Belichick said that really wasn't the main reason he quit. On the New England thing yesterday, I guess it was reported, or I saw it was reported that, you know, I was upset. I was, uh, you know, staying in my office because the Jets denied permission or whatever. I didn't talk to anybody. I saw it on TV, just like maybe some of you did. Okay, there you go. The Jets are looking at an ownership change soon, and Belichick says that is the main reason, the instability there with the ownership possibilities, is the main reason he wants to hold off from taking the Jets' job. Well, move over, Sports Illustrated. Joe Montana is now in the magazine business. That's right, the first issue of his new magazine has not been released yet, but we do know the name. It's called Joe Montana's In the Red Zone. And, you know, there's one thing that this magazine has that other sports magazines don't have, and that's Montana, of course, and he's going to rely on his relationships within the NFL to sell his magazine, and the first articles are with Mike Ditka and Bill Parcells, so looks like he might be successful at this. He says the project will keep him in the sports loop, but no, he has no intentions of ever being a head coach in the NFL. There are plenty of openings. Right there are now. plenty well, of openings. Certainly all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, what you're about to see is the blood, sweat, and tears of the job of TV sports director. You're talking about the difficult job I had today going golfing at the Desert yeah. Inn Hotel. You're not making fun of me here, are you? Oh, no, okay, no, 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 it's a tough I job. I thought for a moment you were there, but we did, went out today <laughs> golfing, had Wayne Gretzky, Greg Maddox, and Ben Scully out there, a very unique group of celebrities put together for this golf tournament at the Desert Inn. It's not often you would find Greg Maddox, Wayne Gretzky, and Ben Scully together on the same golf course, but that was the scene at the Desert Inn today. Now, these guys make no claim of being NFL experts, but we had to get their thoughts on this year's Super Bowl. Ron, I'll be honest with you, I have no idea. Man, I have no idea. Oh, I have no idea. This is tough, isn't it? I think I have an amazing Kresgen or something. I have no idea. Well, now that we got that figured out, golf was next on the list. The athletes, Maddox and Gretzky, loved the game. Scully, the longtime Dodger announcer, he could take it or leave it. I'm going to play with Wayne Gretzky, and I vowed, I vowed that I would play the 18 under the number of goals that Gretzky had in his career, and that was 894. That's a safe bet right I, there. I think so, if I don't run out of balls. I think Tiger Woods is pretty safe. Is he safe? Okay, you're not going to take over his spot. I think he's pretty safe. Wayne Gretzky knows his uh, space, certainly, in the world of sports. He is a pretty good golfer, by the way. We all know Greg Maddox is a very good golfer out there. And okay. I'm jealous you met Wayne Gretzky, let me tell you that. It was, it was all work. I didn't enjoy a moment <laughs> yeah. of it, by the way. Um, we've also got here at the uh, Venetian Hotel, the Grand Canal Shops, one of the most unique golf shops you'll find anywhere in the world. It's called In Celebration of Golf, and joining us right now is Roger Maxwell from the shop. And what kind of, why is this a unique store? Well, 
it is a uh, uh, entertaining venue that for the first time in golf takes the rich traditions of the game and the romance of the game and brings it all together at retail and that's what makes it so unique i want to check out some of the merchandise you have here now this gold golf cart behind you here if you want to go ahead and pick that up and, oh and check God. this out yeah now this this is what you need around the house okay this is one a, of those this is a little uh, a gold plated golf uh, cart with uh, five or six clubs uh, just a super gift item for the the golfer that you may know you're in your family or, or friend they better be really into it to be gold plated oh well they're not really a, the, that type of gold plated it's, oh, okay it's, it's fairly inexpensive but just a neat gift item absolutely in checking out that store we've got some video let's go ahead and show some of the video that store you have some of the most unique things i have seen anywhere where do you find some of this st i'll just call it stuff right now but certainly some of the stuff that you find in this store it's, it's amazing here's some of the traditional stuff the clothing you have a clothing and clubs but there are some unique items you, you search all over the world for this we do we do a lot of shopping in the uh, uk and in europe uh, uh, for unique items as you can see here the the art of the game uh, uh, has a, 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 an array of very very unique artifacts of the game as well as antiques of the game and i'm sure you have things for women as well absolutely <laughs> a full ladies professional shop they have a Hummer golf cart there, Robin. About sixteen thousand dollars for it. It's it's a golf cart, but it's designed as everybody a needs one of those. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> you also have a great uh, now great collection of yeah, photographs and artwork. This is beautiful. And how does that is, shot look this there, is a, huh? This is a neat shot of Arnie at his farewell at St Andrews a few years back, and it's called Arnie's Farewell. And it's really one of the more popular ones for the avid golfer and the, the people who really love this game. This means so much because it, it just purely says the game of golf. Beautiful. All right, Roger Maxwell, thank you very much. You have a full range of items, too. Inexpensive items, certainly, and well, up to very expensive items, certain there, in the whole so. range. Every golfer can find something that uh, he'll admire and, and wish to purchase in celebration of golf. All right. Thank you so much for okay. being with us. Thank Roger. you both. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you very much. We do have some, we got to check out some of this food here that we're, we're going to talk about a little bit later in the show. But we have from Post Rio, one of the restaurants here, Wolfgang Puck's restaurant here in town. This is, An I know it's, it's fish. Right. Uh, I, know, it's, I know that. The house smoked salmon. That's the house smoked salmon. And it has caviar, you can see caviar. right here. And then the lettuce. And yes, ooh. the top of the julienne of potato. And, and that, that's a, a specialty here, that's, only at Post Rio. This is a Wolfgang Puck restaurant. It's right here off of St. Mark's Square in the canal shops. That looks right. tasty. Can we go ahead and keep that? We can keep it's that here, can't we? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hand it, I don't know what to do with it. Hand it right over. <laughs> All right, thanks. You spotted the caveat. I wouldn't have known what that stuff was. <laughs> we have a lot more to come here from St. Mark's Square on the canal shops at the Venetian. All right, welcome back here to the Grand Canal Shops here at the Phoenician Hotel. Vladimir is with us here now from Czechoslovakia. He's one of the artists here that you see in St. Mark's Square. And there are all sorts of things to do here, interesting, unique things here. Vladimir, you got a couple of guys here. Let's go ahead and see a shot of the guys that you're taking some pictures of here, some of the people that stopped by. What's up, guys? Where are you from? Denver. Denver. <laughs> Wait, there's more Denver people here? There's Denver people all over the place. The last people we talked, both of you from Denver? You're from Hungary and you're from Denver. Wait a second. We got to check this. Originally from Moscow? I live in Denver right now. Okay, all right. Live in Denver now, but from Moscow. So you guys just hanging out in Vegas for what? For fun. Just for fun. What, what, what other reason? Just to come and have a good time. Okay, what do you think here, Vladimir? You got a couple of guys from Eastern Bloc countries originally uh, from your, your Czechoslovakia. Uh huh, that's correct. It's my uh, neighboring brothers here. I'm going to be happy to destroy them in this picture <laughs> you're gonna be vicious on them huh you got some is this some of your artwork up here that you've done some of the characters let's go ahead and get a shot that's some of your work up there that you can get some of the interesting stuff that uh that vladimir's been putting together he's going to be working on this for a little while so we'll well we may if we have time check this out a little bit later but first of all robin you got a special guest up there and i i'm guessing it involves more food possibly We've got a little bit of food here in front of us. Joining me now is Luigi. He is the executive chef at Canaletto. Canaletto, yes. Canaletto. All right, Luigi, thank you so much for You're being here. You're very welcome. You are a true Italian chef. Yes, I am. 
from Milan? From Milano. All my guys are rooting for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're here and there in the background. What have you brought for us this evening? Well, we have uh, one of our specialties. It's the risotto with the Aragosta, which is the lobster risotto. Uh, we have uh, the Galletto. Uh, he has uh, porcini mushroom, and um, That's it's, it's, a, it's the game hen. It's a game hen. Uh -huh. we, we roasted in our rotisserie mm. uh, slowly. Then we have uh, gamberoni alla busera, which is a truly Venetian uh, dish of gamberoni. They are made with the paprika, shallot, uh, brandy, and we try to use a nice strong paprika. So it's, it's, it's hard to find. And what are you holding? Uh, this one is a focaccetta, it's one of my favorite. It's a double folded pizza. There is a cherry tomato, smoked prosciutto, arugula, and um, there is a mozzarella cheese in it. Okay, how long does it take you to set up a restaurant on the scale of Canaletto's here in... To set it up from start to end? Probably, well, I probably, I did a few times. Um, two months, I get everything ready, hire everybody, get um, all the food prepped and ready to go. It's got to be about. nice to start it all off. Yes, you have. Brand new everything. Brand new everything. I get to break in every single store. So you brought a lot of family over from Italy to try things out? Actually, my family is here in town right now, but Good. this is the first time they came to Vegas and uh, just had a little sun and they came to visit and see the sun. That's great. Okay, yeah. tell me one, th these are giant prawns. Yes, they are. How do you prepare those? Uh, those are prepared with just shallots. They are uh, with shallots, olive oil. There is a paprika, brandy, and there is a touch of cream sauce in it. So we're looking at true Italian fare. True Italian fare, correct. There is nothing fake. Everything is made in house. We don't buy or uh, anything pre-made. So everything is done and fresh. So for people of Italian descent, they want true Italian food. They gotta come and see me. Yeah. <laughs> That's most definitely. All right. Thank you so much. You're for very this welcome. Thank and you. all of a sudden, Ron has shown up here. Hi, Ron. What do you think that means? Okay. We have food? I think it's hungry. Absolutely. <laughs> when you got food mentioned up here, I can I can tell. I can smell it from back here. It does. Know, it smells here. wonderful. And yeah, I have a fork. Yeah. Ron, gonna some, dig in here? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try some of the hen here. I'm gonna try some of that. All right. And then, you need uh, a knife for that just, then. Yeah. All right. We'll give that a shot here in just a little bit. What do you <laughs> say? I think that's a good idea. I'm just gonna do it right now. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Canalettos here off of St. Mark's Square. Thank you. Thank you. All right, time for us to take a quick break. Yep, running rebels when we come back. We will have more right after this, coming to you live from the Grand Canal Shops. Okay, we promised an update with Vladimir, our artist over there from Czechoslovakia, drawing his caricatures of a couple of guys, buddies of his. Yeah, he's doing a pretty good job, it looks like, so far, and having a good time here at the Grand Canal Shops at the Venetian. They might be a little surprised when they take when, a look at that. Oh, yeah, you don't get to see those till the end. <laughs> There's a reason for that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, you know, last night we, we picked our teams for the Sugar Bowl, and Ron and I both picked Florida State. Mario, he picked Virginia Tech. And in this case, we both mentioned that we would have liked to see Virginia Tech Absolutely. win, but we felt that Florida State, minus the five or six points, whatever you want at that point, was going to win this game and, and win it uh, conventionally. And indeed, they, they certainly did if you checked out tonight's football game. It was a fun, exciting football game, and Florida State gains the national championship in college football with the Big Three tonight right here on News 13. And we've got a lot of football, of course, coming your way with the playoffs coming up on Saturday right here on News 13. You can check them out starting Saturday morning, AFC, NFC, wild card games, and then, of course, the Super Bowl is on ABC this year. All right, and who's your pick for those playoff games, Ron? Well, the play I like Tennessee giving up five points. I, I agree um, with Mark when he talked about it earlier, that number going up here. Uh, and the rest of them, I don't know. I don't have a feel for the rest of the games there, but I do like Tennessee. I think they're playing great right now. I also like, in the AFC, uh, rather, in the NFC, I, I really like the way Minnesota's playing right now. The Rams are doing great, but I like Minnesota as a hot team. I agree with you on that one, however. I am going to take Buffalo against Tennessee. I'd like to see Tennessee oh, okay. win it, actually, but I think Buffalo is going to put it on strong. That's, that, that's my pick, anyway. All right, what we're out know? of time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Special thanks to the folks at the Venetian for having us here tonight. Thank you so much for joining us this season, and we will be back in August of 2000. <laughs> see you next year.